of the reasons why we decided to hold this webinar is because I spent a lot of time talking to people about how we created the School of Sustainability and how we created the Institute. And I recognize also talking with colleagues around the country that there's been a lot of different strategies that people have employed to develop sustainability programs. And it's still very much in its infancy and I think there's a lot of potential for developing new programs. So I'm hoping that this will be helpful and useful to those in attendance. I'm also going to say something about our timeline uh, within the school at ASU. And I'm going to talk a little bit about alumni because I know that m almost half of the participants here are not coming directly from higher education. I want to let them know what our students are doing when they graduate from the program. Next slide. So here's a brief timeline of the development of sustainability education at ASU. And I use those last three words carefully because in addition to my responsibilities for looking after degree programs within the School of Sustainability, I'm also responsible for trying to infuse sustainability education across the entire institution, which is now numbers uh, north of 80,000 students. And <clears throat> the antecedents to our school, um, we can go further back than 1997, but the reason why I put that on there is because that was one of the first large interdisciplinary research programs at ASU, the Central Arizona Phoenix Long-Term Ecological Research Project, that had as its co-PIs an archaeologist and an ecologist. And what they proposed to do to the National Science Foundation was to try to understand the greater Phoenix area as a special kind of ecosystem. Now, this wasn't ecology, studying ecology in the city. It was really trying to understand how the city was a special kind of ecosystem. And the only way to do that was to be able to draw on the expertise from people from across campus, from engineering to religious studies and everything in between. That was very important for a, an IGERT program in urban ecology that followed in 2000. And the third dot on that timeline, I really should have made about twice the size of this slide because it was so critical to the development of sustainability at ASU. And that was the arrival in 2002 of uh, Michael M. Crow who came to us as our 16th president from Columbia University, where he was uh, very much uh, involved in the development of the Earth Institute. And one of his primary goals was to make sure that sustainability was a defining principle of ASU, that this wasn't something that would be added on to an existing program somewhere or start out as a small experiment, but it would define what ASU is and what it would become. In 2004, he gathered some leading thinkers and practitioners at Temazon in Mexico, and it was at that retreat that those individuals envisioned a brand new standalone Global Institute of Sustainability and a School of Sustainability. And what I think was really critical about that decision, and then again, this is just one way to create a sustainability program, is that it wouldn't be added onto an existing degree program or an existing college. It would be a standalone college. And this really liberated the faculty as well as the administrators to think of something entirely new. In other words, it wasn't an old way of doing things. It wasn't a 100-year-old textbook that would define the pathway that we would take. And so it was really a chance to create something that was starting with a blank page. In 2006, we launched the School of Sustainability. We were given permission by our Board of Regents. And then in 2007, we admitted our graduate students. And in the following year, we opened up our BA and BS in sustainability. In 2006, we were given permission to do BA through PhD in sustainability. Again sustainability not as an adjective, but sustainability as a standalone degree program. In 2008, this goes back to my earlier statement about infusing sustainability everywhere. We also created a concentration, a special concentration for business students. In 2010, we created a university-wide minor to make it possible for any student, regardless of their major, to have a sustainability education. We created a law and sustainability program. The following year, we created a BA in public service and public policy concentration in sustainability, also one with engineering, and another PhD uh, concentration in complex adaptive systems. In 2012, largely in response to demand from graduate students who are interested not so much in the research side of sustainability, but the application, we created a Master of Sustainable Solutions, which has grown very quickly. That also corresponded with an investment by uh, the Walton Family Foundation to create a sustainability solutions service. I have that there because many of our students are participating in very applied solutions-oriented research through that organization. We also created a number of concurrent master's degrees, which you can see listed there. In uh, 2013, we launched our first efforts online with the BA in Business and Sustainability. 
Uh, some of you may have read in the in the Times this last year that ASU now has an, an arrangement with Starbucks for something called a College Achievement Plan, which allows students at Starbucks to finish their degrees, and that will be done exclusively through ASU. And we're help, we're, we are hopeful that this degree in particular will be attractive to them. Uh, in 2015, or in 2014, sorry, they, we created a new Executive Master of Sustainability Leadership. This is pitched at mid-career professionals. Again, this is in response to demand from people who are working in organizations where they are suddenly made the Chief Sustainability Officer and don't know very much about sustainability. So we've created that program and are graduating our first cohort on Friday. That's been very successful. We've also created an Energy and Sustainability Certificate. We're launching a Food Systems Certificate starting next fall. And then next year we have several things happening, uh, two of them online. So we're creating our sustainability program online. We're creating a Master's of Sustainability Leadership that will also be launching in fall. And we've just signed an agreement with Thunderbird um, School of Global Management to, to launch a concurrent degree with them, which is part of our globalization initiative. Next slide. We've seen um, fairly rapid growth in sustainability programs on campus starting in 2007, as I mentioned, with our graduate students. And over time, you'll see that we've, um, as of 2014, we now have almost 1,500 students in sustainability-related programs. This does not include all those students who take some courses in sustainability. We actually calculated in 2013 that 67,000 seats were filled in sustainability-related courses. So we certainly fulfilled our mission, mission in that regard. Next slide. Shirley talked earlier about the uh, sustainability competencies. We've used this as the basis for refining our undergraduate as well as graduate curricula. Uh, the systems thinking is fundamental to any kind of sustainability education. Students uh, have to learn that reductionism has its role, but it's also very critical that when students are looking at challenges, so for instance food, that that cannot be separated from water systems, from energy systems, from cultural systems, political systems, and so forth. We try to get our students to think about the future, not in a forecasting, not necessarily just as forecasting. We ask them to think about plausible futures, but we want them to think about desirable futures as well, which leads to the third competency, normative thinking. We want them to be able to use words like should and not worry about it. We want them to also think about and how to incorporate values, not only their own values, but values of others, and how to deal with those circumstances where values conflict. We want them to think about how to strategically get to the future we want, and then ultimately we need to infuse in our students the idea that these things cannot be done individually, uh, not just in, as people, but also as institutions or even universities. Collaboration is key. Next slide. Those sustainability competencies have informed some new, new initiatives that we're launching this year. One is uh, program level learning outcomes. We have, for the first time, defined those for our undergraduate degrees, and they are based on those competencies. So it's something that we expect all students and all faculty to help our students achieve by the time that they graduate, regardless of whether or not they're doing the BA or BS. One mechanism for doing that are e-portfolios. We're borrowing this from our design colleagues. We think this is a means not only of allowing students to leave the institution with something where they can demonstrate what they've done, but also as a means of assessing whether or not they are achieving themselves, those program le learning outcomes, and also as a, an opportunity for them to show how they've grown over the course of the program. We're focusing now, uh, and always have indeed, on solutions-based learning, but we are formalizing that in partnership with other programs on campus. So most universities have general education requirements that, in, that include individual courses that satisfy those requirements. We're now moving towards a project-based model where Students can enroll in a single course and get their first year composition, mathematics, uh, and then whatever they're working on in their major included as part of that individual course. So I'm very excited to see how that, how that plays out. Informal education is a new priority for us at the Institute. And this is, again, in response to demand. We get requests from external agencies that are looking for short courses, workshops, online opportunities, uh, certificates in sustainability, and we hired just a few months ago uh, an individual who will be responsible for helping find those opportunities and make sure that we can deliver on that. Next slide. 
So the future of sustainability and education, education at ASU, I see a number of things on the horizon. One, uh, the solutions that we're working on through the Walton Family Foundation or through this, this informal education, we know is going to feed back to education. It already is. So the experience that we have with working with external companies, foundations, nonprofits, we want to make sure that that comes back into the classroom and helps to inform our students to prepare them for whatever career that they might follow. I'm seeing increasingly that those informal education opportunities are blending with formal education opportunities. So we're actually looking at uh, uh, potential for some of our master's students to help us evaluate the efficacy of some of the informal education that we're offering as training for them in whatever career that they might decide to pursue. We're working on a university-wide solution service, and this is really trying to, to tap into the huge capacity and capability that we have at universities to help us work on real-world solutions. It's happening a lot in colleges individually, but we're looking for a way to organize that so that we can really tackle some of the larger questions. Global outreach through online learning has been a very important strategy of the university, and that will certainly be part of our strategy going forward in sustainability. I put master's degrees down there because there, I think there's going to be continued growth and demand for master's degrees in sustainability. And then alumni dividends. I'm, don't mean here necessarily alumni writing checks. I mean alumni returning to the university, meeting with our students, and meeting with our faculty to help them really determine what kinds of things we could have done differently and how we can help them in the lifelong learning that they're pursuing. Next slide. And this is my last slide. Uh, I, I want to put this up only to demonstrate that students in sustainability are doing exceedingly well. When we started our program, there were a lot of eyebrows raised. People thought sustainability was a fad. It would be gone within a few years, um, and indeed that hasn't happened. Students that come into our program uh, stick with it. We have the highest retention rates on campus, meaning students don't switch to another major or to another university. 96% of our undergraduates are employed. All of our graduate student alumni are employed. But the red bar that you're looking at, the red column, is to me the more, um, the more important one. And that's the number of students who are working in sustainability-related careers. When we first started doing these surveys two years ago, less than half of our students were in sustainability-related careers, which is about twice the national average college degree match. But what's happened over the last two years is that number has grown significantly. So as of last year, 74% of our undergraduate alumni were working in sustainability-related careers, which to me tells us something about the market, but also tells me something about the quality of the education that we're providing to our students, that they're able to go out, seek, and find those sustainability um, opportunities. 